Hello friends, Chris Gorsi here, president of Thrive Today, and I want to welcome you to the Relational Skills in Real Life podcast. Friends, today's topic is focusing on how to traverse this political landscape that's happening in our world. How do we navigate the big emotions and deal with the strong and deep tensions that exist around politics? So we're gonna look at some very practical tips for managing big emotions and dealing with the differences of opinion on political issues. How do we use God's sight under these circumstances, right? So I'm really glad that you're here. Christy Herring and I sit down for this conversation about how to be the people that God created us to be and how do we reflect the living God and navigate this terrain where everybody's feeling something, no matter where people fall on which side of the aisle, there are strong feelings. There's a lot of fears. There's a lot of anger. There's a whole lot of enemy mode going on, friends. And so let's listen in to what Christy and I have to say about this topic. All right. Well, Chris, you know, there are some situations where uh, emotions tend to run high. Politics is definitely one of those situations. And in the United States right now, at the time of this recording, uh, we're in the midst of a big election year. Um, so can you talk to us? I have two questions. Number one is talk to us about some of the emotions that people are feeling in times like these, some of the things you're observing. And number two, um, why you think emotions tend to run so high in situations like these? Yeah, those are excellent questions, Christy. And you know what? Um, when, it, when I think about what people are feeling, you know, Jim Wilder and the Life Model calls the emotions the big six. And honestly, I think we're probably hitting about all of these six emotions as we gear up uh, for the election. There's a lot of emotions going on. And, and you know, some of us are just really worried and, and fearful and afraid of what's going to happen if my candidate, you know, loses. What does that mean? Which then that leads to hopeless despair right? Like, I don't know what I'm going to do if this happens. And these are big emotions, Christy, like people are feeling this, their cups are full. And, and there's, uh, you know, I think there's sadness and loss as well. And honestly, I think that goes into what the other part of this question, which is why, why are things so big around the election? And you know what, I think from what I gather interacting with people and thinking about it myself is this we fear outcomes that are personal for me or for my family, for my children, for my community, right? There's a lot of pain and there's a lot of fear. And so what we're, what we're getting here is a perfect storm. And that leads to anger, right? That's where we just get mad because we want something to stop. And, and I'll tell you what, there's a whole lot of anger and a whole lot of enemy mode that's coming out of these big feelings. And there's also a bit of disgust woven through all of this as well, Christy, that people are uh, feeling very disgusted at what they're seeing happening on the other side of the aisle. Um, and that is scary for people. Like you combine these emotions, you get a, a perfect storm here. And the thing about the brain and emotions is when I'm feeling some of these and some of it's not only what's happening now, but it's anticipatory of where this is going. What that does is that triggers pain from back here. So it feels intolerable for people and people aren't able to use words to, to, to share different um, perspectives because it just, these big emotions end up putting us in enemy mode. And it is like a perfect storm, Christy. It's really hard for people to navigate. Yeah. Well, I love what you're saying, though, is realizing that these things, it's bringing up things that are personal to us, things that matter to us. And yeah. in a sense, we really want to validate how people feel, but yes. it, it does matter. And it, it makes yeah. sense that we're feeling these big emotions. That's real. And and so, um, Chris, you know, with that, though, we tend to sometimes get stuck. We get stuck in anger. We get stuck in fear. And then it's hard for us to act like our best selves, we kind of lose ourselves in that. So do you have any tips, um, just maybe one tip for somebody who is feeling stuck in, a, in an emotion of what they can do to help them get unstuck? Yeah, you know, one of the best things you can do is actually breathe, deep breathing, that just taking a moment to catch your breath. The first thing to go when our fight or flight response starts kicking in the, in the gear is we start shallow breathing. 
And so I would say, let's take some deep breaths. Let's quiet. We need the quieting skills. And in that, we're working on getting relational. We're trying to just get our footing here because we know when I'm not in my relational mode or relational sweet spot, everything else is harder. So remembering to breathe, which leads to quieting, which helps me better get relational. And then I can remember some of how God's provided for me before. And that helped me remember if God did this back here, if he parted the Red Sea back here, then what is he capable of doing up here, right? So we want to remember those times and even share stories of times of God's faithfulness. And of course, as we do that, we're also trying to, to interact with what God is up to in all of this. Because you know what? God is up to something. He is up to something here. He sees it. He's well aware of what's happening in our country. He's aware of all the, the many complex dynamics going on. And so really staying anchored with the living God, seeing some of what he sees and interacting with him, that helps to refresh our peace while we learn to feel our feelings and share our feelings and quiet our feelings. And that's, that's really a nice recipe right there, Chrissy, just to help us stay anchored. Mm -hmm. while we navigate this terrain. That's really good. That reminds me of one of the phrases I picked up along the way that's been so helpful for me, is, especially when I'm feeling anxious, fearful, is like God God sees and he deeply mm -hmm. cares, but he is not anxious. So he good. is not anxious. And so if he's not anxious, how do I connect with him? Get his heartbeat so on good. this because he, yeah. yeah. So, um, good. so what about... The last question I want to ask is any tips for when we're coming across someone or we see we're dealing with two different people who have very strong opposing views um, and they're having a hard time connecting because these clashing views are just causing a lot of friction in the relationship. Yeah, this is this is a big one here because that is happening a lot and we've we're kind of losing our ability to be able to to hear other perspectives and really it's understanding the mind. And so as we've talked a lot about return to joy and our resources, you know, part of helping to navigate this terrain is just help using validation and comfort what we like to call the VCR process in the life model. We we learn to validate what people are feeling, what's going on in them. We might not agree with their outcomes. We might not agree with what they're going to vote, but we can validate what they're feeling. And then we can even offer some comfort. Like, what do you need when you feel this way? These are really big feelings, right? Because validation saying what you see and then the comfort follows, follows up with, hey, what is helpful under these circumstances? While we have this conversation, what would be helpful? Because I really want to understand you, and, but I also want you to be able to understand me. So we use the validation and comfort sequence interacting with people who have different, you know, beliefs than we may have. But then we're also, you know, connecting with the living God as well and seeing people through the perspective of what God sees when he looks at this person. So I might have a hard time, you know, interacting with someone because of just we have completely different perspectives. But you know what? God's sight actually helps me to see this is another human being made in God's image. They have fears like I have fears. They have hurts like I have hurts. And so what the God site does is it just personalizes those interactions so that we can stay present and loving and kind while we validate and comfort and really try to understand each other. Honestly, Christy, those, those skills right there would completely change uh, the landscape if we were able to practice some of these skills when we're interacting with people family members, friends, strangers who might have different perspectives on the election than we have. I love that. And it makes me think when we can get out of any enemy mode and really try to hear and see each other, so often we discover we have a lot more in common than we thought we did. Um, and we begin to find areas of commonality, even if it's only that we both feel afraid. Well, mm -hmm. hey, then we can <laughs> connect with each other over this uh, similar feeling that we're both experiencing. So that's right. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chris. It's been wonderful yes. to chat with you on this topic and, um, thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank you. All right, friends. Well, there's a lot of gold in those Hills. You know what? Christy and I covered a lot of ground in the short amount of time and friends, the good news is we can be like the moon that reflects the sun's light. 
right? The moon is a big rock. It has no light unto itself, but it reflects the sun's light and it's bright in a very dark sky. So as Christ followers, we can reflect the living God in these times, in these circumstances. There's no surprises here. God is not surprised by what's happening here in our country. The good news is he has called us to be here in such a time as this so that we can spread his love and his joy and reflect his character in these times. And friends, at the time of this recording, we're getting ready to put on a webinar here at Thrive Today where we will be sharing stories about learning to manage what we feel and being with other people in their big feelings. And this webinar is relevant at this time, uh, but really at any time that big emotions are present. So you can find the uh, registration link or the recording link if you're watching and listening to this after the fact. Um, please check out the, the episode description and get that information. The good news is you can learn more about using relational skills to navigate political tensions. Uh, we have a previous webinar as well on politics, which you can uh, listen to, and it's linked in this podcast description. Friends, there is hope. There is good news. There is joy in the storms when we be the people that God created us to be. And I hope that you find this helpful. And check out our webinar where we're going to go into a lot of examples on dealings and big emotions.